This is Tradeflow News, bringing you relevant news and insights from around the world. Tradeflow News, enabling trade for SMEs and economies worldwide. These are some of the key topics that we will be looking into in today's program. First, let's take a look at the overnight headlines which are impacting the commodity markets. Oil prices will stay elevated into next year as OPEC Plus keeps a tight leash on supply despite US-led strategic crude releases, a Reuters poll showed on Tuesday, but a COVID-19 resurgence fueled by the Omicron variant could loom large over the outlook. A survey of 39 economists and analysts, kicked off before Omicron grabbed headlines, forecast Brent crude to average $71.25 a barrel in 2021, up from the $70.89 consensus in October and the $70.57 average this year. The 2022 Brent outlook was raised to $75.33 from $74.04. This is the highest projection this year for the benchmark. Global jet fuel markets stayed under pressure on Tuesday as more countries expanded border restrictions to keep the new Omicron coronavirus variant at bay, prompting travelers to reconsider their plans. Jet fuel demand, the biggest laggard in the oil complex, had been forecast to post the strongest growth of 550,000 barrels per day to 5.9 million barrels of oil per day in fourth quarter, according to the International Energy Agency in its November 16 report. But now Omicron posed the greatest risk to jet fuel consumption. Hong Kong expanded a ban on entry for non-residents from several countries, the latest to expand travel curbs after Israel and Japan have already announced border closures to all foreign travelers. Moving on to the top news in the energy sector. The increase in OPEC's oil output in November has again undershot the rise planned under a deal with allies, a Reuters survey found on Tuesday, bringing a lack of capacity in some producers into focus ahead of a policy meeting this week. The Organization of the Petroleum Exporting Countries, OPEC, pumped 27.74 million barrels per day, BPD, in November, the survey found a rise of 220,000 barrels of oil per day from the previous month but below the 254,000 increase allowed under the supply deal. OPEC and its allies, a group known as OPEC Plus, are gradually relaxing 2020's output cuts as demand recovers from the pandemic. But many smaller producers can't raise supply and others have been wary of pumping too much in case of renewed COVID-19 setbacks. The oil and gas industry risks a huge workforce shortage as more than half of workers in the sector seek to move into the renewable energy industry, a survey published on Tuesday showed. The survey conducted as part of a report by recruitment firm Brunel and Oil and Gas JobSearch.com showed that 43% of workers want to leave the energy industry altogether within the next five years. When asked which sectors they'd pursue employment opportunities in, 56% of those working in oil and gas said renewables, compared to 38.8% last year. Next, we have the top news in metal markets. A few Chinese border cities are halting some non-container commodity imports by rail to reduce the risk of COVID-19 clusters caused by the virus brought in from other countries amid a resurgence of infections in northern areas of China. China's efforts to keep the virus out face increasing pressure as infections grow globally with the new threat of the Omicron variant, M.I. Feng, a spokesperson for the National Health Commission, said on Tuesday. The city of Manjoli in the northern Chinese region of Inner Mongolia, a small border town near Russia, said from Wednesday it would suspend taking some non-containerized rail cargo arriving from abroad that requires manual loading and unloading, including coal and fertilizer. Gold bounced on Tuesday as market sentiment was dampened after Moderna's CEO warned COVID-19 vaccines were likely to be less effective against the Omicron variant. Spot gold rose 0.5% to $1,794.09 per ounce by 10.41 a.m. Eastern Time, 15.41 GMT, after rising as much as 1.3% earlier in the session. U.S. gold futures advanced 1.1% to $1,805.10. The Moderna chief's comments rattled financial markets, leading to a slide in global equities. We will now look at the top news in the agricultural sector. India plans to increase 2021-22 fertilizer subsidies to a record of more than 1.55 trillion rupees, $20.64 billion, 
to avoid shortages amid a sharp increase in global prices of the chemicals, sources familiar with the matter said. The figure is almost double the amount budgeted for fertilizer subsidies in the budget for this fiscal year ending on March 31. India, the top importer of urea, is a major buyer of diammonium phosphate, DAP needed to feed its huge agriculture sector which employs about 60% of the country's workforce and accounts for 15% of $2.7 trillion economy. That is all for today's news on commodity markets. Stay tuned to Trade Flow News as we continue to provide you with more updates. We also invite you to follow us on Twitter at Trade Flow News which allows you to watch our program on your mobile device or desktop to receive information from there.